love that. This is the brand new KGM Tivoli, and if you recognize the logo on the bonnet there, that is because KGM is the new name for Sanyong. Dad and I spotted one of these recently on one of our test drives out in the wild, and we had no idea what that was. What on earth is that? Tivioli. So the team at Drayton Motors in Boston, who are a KGM main dealer, have given me the keys to this one for a couple of days. Under the bonnet is this EXGDI 1.5 litre turbocharged petrol engine. And it's actually quite good. The one we're looking at here is a fully automatic gearbox version. However, you can also get them with a manual gearbox. The name Tivoli is actually an Italian town. And looking at the front here, the styling is very similar to that of Italian manufacturers. The three inserts here in the front bumper remind me of the Abarth. And although it's a five-seater SUV vehicle, it actually doesn't feel over big on the road. Drayton Motors in Boston have been stocking this since the beginning of January, and this model in this spec will set you back £22,600. However, entry-level spec on one of these is just over £20,000. Although a budget car cheap, it does not feel. The seats are stitched beautifully and the bolsters are firm yet comfortable. Mod cons in the cockpit include a navigation system. The sound system is phenomenal. Individual passenger and driver climate controls, power outlets, a heated steering wheel and heated seats. Cubby holes for days two cup holders, a glove box big enough for me to get most of my forearm in. It's just a nice place to be inside. Upon entering the Tivoli, you get your own little light show. And when it's time to turn the car off, you also get a goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, KGM. And as a driver, the ride height is perfect. Getting in and out is relatively easy. I've got four or five inches between the top of my head and the roof lining, and I'm a big guy at six foot four and 20 odd stone. The seats are nice and comfortable, and this steering wheel sits beautifully. I can't get over, however, the Sangyong logo, because those double dragons are there constantly reminding me this is what it used to be. Now, I've got the seat in my driving position, meaning it is all the way back. And if I was to get inside the car to be a rear passenger, well, this is very comfortable. Yes, my knees touch the back of the seat. My head does not, however, touch the uh, roof. And if a person that was a little bit smaller than me was driving, I would have lots of room in the back here, including my own cup holder, and armrest, which is a leatherette feel. It's rather nice in the back here. Lots of space. Yeah, this is all right. And if you need more storage, the seats in the rear here fold forward. Sadly, the bench seat does not fold up, giving you a flat surface. However, you've got adequate space here. I reckon I could probably lay down in the back of it. And as a matter of academic, now I've mentioned it, I'm going to put that to the test. Well, no, I can't lay down in it, but there's enough space for me to sit in the boot. See ya. Oh, look, it's a John. And when you've finished being in the boot, you can get out and transfer it back to car mode quite easily. One thing I would say is the boot height well, it's quite high. Uh, my elderly Labrador is not going to be able to jump into the back of this. She is going to need a lift or a ramp. And for somebody, if you are of a limited mobility or a smaller person than me, you might be struggling to lift heavy items over this lip into the boot. From the back, it doesn't look too bad with the big Tivoli badge on the rear here. And even the inspector appreciates it. In fact, there's probably enough room for two Labradors in there. But before I take it for a long anticipated test drive, 
I want to ask the opinion of somebody who is notoriously difficult to please, and that's my wife. Sweetheart, what do you think to the new KGM Tivoli? It's quite nice, isn't it? Well, a comprehensive review from Mrs. John Couplin there, and high praise indeed. Let's take it then for a test drive and see what it is like on the road. Here we go. This is the bit you've been waiting for and the bit I've been waiting for as well. Driving position is nice. It is a comfortable place to be. You've got the adjustable steering wheel here. It is manual, it's not electronic and multi-seat adjusting. Um, I've actually got the seat a bit far forward, which is very, very unusual for me. I normally drive my cars with my seats all the way back. There is a little bit of an adjustment up and down here, but I'm not gonna be sitting like this and enjoying it like I'm driving me McDonald's Suzuki Alto. But actually the driving position is very nice and high up on the road as well. Start up is easy, it is keyless. Stop start and you get this lovely little illuminated dashboard animation. The touchscreen system loads up nicely and I've obviously got the aircon on this morning. I don't like this uh, this <laughs> armrest. It's very plasticky and it's very um, uncomfortable. Right, let's take it for a spin then. Automatic on this one, put the car into drive. One thing I will say is it hasn't got an electronic um, handbrake. It has got a proper pull-up lever handbrake. Less things to go wrong, I suppose. We've got that dink donk dink donk um, from the indicator, which fine, not a problem. It's got a unique tone, and you've just heard the doors lock as we've come out of the drive there and down the road. Going to take it for a spin around Lincolnshire's back roads. We're not going on any motorways today, and the bing bongs that you can hear is the lane assist system. I've actually turned that off now because what I'm doing whilst I'm on these back roads is straying quite close to the white line. Lots of other features down here on this control panel include heated steering wheel and hill climb assist. You've also got parking sensors that you can turn on and off and turn your illuminated dashboard up and down. There is quite a bit of road noise from the tyres. I'm doing 30 miles an hour through the village and it's not uncomfortable but I would be probably talking louder than I should to speak to my passenger especially if I was on the road at 50 or 60 miles an hour the tires are pumped up quite hard and it could be the fact that the car hasn't really been anywhere it's done less than a thousand miles from new but there's no wind noise from any of the doors they all seem to be closed nicely and all the windows yeah are, are, are up the suspension there is a bit of suspension noise from the front and that heated steering wheel I've left on, turn that off. It doesn't feel a bad place to be and there's no trim rattle. Plastic trim, leather trim, even in new cars you get a squeak, a squelch and a rattle and you have to put your trim lube on it. But there's none of this on here. I'm going to take it out of the village and take it around some of these bends. I'm not going to be thrashing it round the bends because it is quite a big old beast. But when you're driving it, it doesn't feel like a big SUV. It feels the same sort of size as, dare I say, a Nissan Duke. It doesn't feel as big as a Rover 75. Steering is tight, it's quite responsive, it's not heavy either. Could I get over the uh, loud road noise yeah i could can i hear the engine from the cockpit not when i'm cruising at 40 miles an hour but when i put my foot down yeah it roars you can hear the turbo maybe that's what you want the interior doesn't feel cheap it doesn't feel budget yes there are things like caps missing from the screw holes on the sun visor and the sun visor just feels like thinly covered foam the light buttons here, well, they've got a little micro switch behind them and I can sense there's probably going to be some issues with them in the future if you keep playing with them. Um, the fold down 
sunglasses Heil holder, well, it needed a little bit of a tweak there. It comes down every sort of 10 uh, goes. It's, uh, it sticks. Um, but yeah, it's got everything I need. The aircon is lovely. It really is powerful, that aircon. And dual climate control as well, so you can control passenger side and driver's side. Does it reach into the back? No, there's no vents here at the back for the air conditioning, which is a bit of a shame. Can I fold the windows in whilst driving? Yes. Yes, I can. I need to get through a tight gap. Fold me windows in whilst parking. That is an opportunity. That is a possibility. At 40 miles an hour, the car feels nice. It's a nice place to be at cruising speeds. We're going to take it onto the main road so I can get it up to 60 miles an hour. Sadly, no dual carriageway driving today. It is a bit bumpy in places. I have no idea what that was. What are you beeping at me for? Oh, it's telling me there's a speed camera. That's good. Ding dong, ding dong. Sang yong, sang yong. No, you can't call it that anymore. KGM, KGM. Sang yong, sang yong. <laughs> That audible noise is for the average speed camera here, which is a good feature to have. I don't know how often that updates. Is it something you're going to have to get a new micro SD card from, from the dealer every couple of years, or does it automatically do it via Wi-Fi? Something I don't know and would have to have a look into. But the navigation system is a beautiful looking thing. The map is easy to follow, and if I zoom in on where I am now, uh, it will tell me within meters my exact location it's keeping up very nice let's open her up there's the roar Woo! okay <laughs> that gets up to speed quite nicely at 50 miles an hour on the main road here it is still a nice place to be the road noise has increased in the cabin and it's coming from the wheels of all places. The wind noise is not an issue. The doors seem to be firmly closed. That road noise would maybe get on my nerves at high speeds. The features in the cockpit seem very nice. We've got automatic cruise control, automatic wipers, speed limiters and all sorts of buttons here on the steering wheel. The Sangyong logo, the Double Dragon logo, still prominent in the centre here. There are things on the car that still say Sangyong and I don't know if outside of the UK it is still a Sangyong car. Other features, the heated steering wheel, the illuminated dash, the ability to turn off parking sensors are good to have. It's nice to know that I'm not tied into these features and if I want to just get into the car and drive, then I can. I like the fact that the air conditioning is not controlled via the touchscreen navigation audio system here. I like to be able to have something that I can touch that's not a screen. However, they are still touchscreen buttons and they do illuminate when you turn the car on. Heated seats is a nice option and there are other driving modes, include sports and winter mode. I'm guessing winter mode changes something within the traction system for snow and ice. I haven't driven it as a sports car in sport mode because, well, I want to get the best I can out of it from an economic point of view. The on-screen readout from the um, miles per gallon from a fuel economy wise is telling me 26.8 miles per gallon and that's quite disappointing. I would be expecting at least high 30s, mid 40s for something like this on the motorway. Now don't get me wrong, I've been thrashing it around Lincolnshire's back roads and driving through the town centre, but I would expect a higher mile per gallon from the Tivoli. The seats are not firm, but they are not soft either. I do suffer sometimes with lower back pain. They're doing all right so far, and I've been driving the car now for 10 to 12 miles. Is it something I think 
that I could get in and sit comfortably in for four hours? No, probably not. Maybe after two hours, I'd have to get out and stretch my legs. But the side bolsters here hug me nicely. They don't flop about, but they're also not too firm. I'm not a slender guy. I'm not a svelte guy, but my back fits nicely within the seat. Also, at six foot four, I've got plenty of height here with the roof lining. It's a comfortable place to be, and actually, the roof doesn't get smaller at the back. So if you're sat in the back as a passenger, plenty of room for you too. And I had a sit in the back here yesterday. What have I got there? 10 inches? Maybe more? Maybe 12? You get less on an aeroplane. So I've had the car for 24 hours now and I've done quite a bit in it. I went to pick Mrs. John Coupland up from work and she thought it was a nice place to be and quite liked it. Don't get me wrong, she's used to the old bangers that I have in my collection and we daily drive a smart car. But for somebody that has a bright pink Fiat 500, for her to say that the KGM Tivoli is a nice place to be, that's quite a testament because she's difficult to please. I've taken it to Dad's and he thinks it's a nice thing too. He's commented on the ride not being as comfortable as he would probably like and the road noise as well. But at the price point, what else do you get? £22,600 for this model. And that's not cheap, but it is a budget SUV and it's not pretending to be something that it isn't. We're not being told by KGM that it is luxurious. But again, it's not a bad place to be inside. Things like the armrest is very firm. It's just a piece of trim over plastic. It's not padded leather. The door cards are this woven material, but again, not leather. Yeah, you've got a bit of scratchy plastic, but it's not tat. It's not falling apart and there's no rattles. It actually seems good quality. Mechanically, Dad said it looks quite good under the bonnet and doesn't look unnecessarily complicated or difficult to work on. He found it very easy to identify all the parts under the bonnet that he would need to look at. Would I have a KGM Tivoli? No. Why? Because I don't need one. But if you needed one, if you needed the space, and you wanted a budget SUV, I think it's perfect. And now I get to use the reversing camera. And even whilst pulling it back in at the dealership, a customer has just turned and stopped in his tracks to look at the Tivoli. What does that tell you? Ding, ding, ding. Love that. That's it then, the KGM Tivoli saga with me has come to an end and I've brought it back to the dealership. I'm going to hand the keys over and am I going to be sad about that? Kind of, but by the time I get home I'll have got over that. My advice to you if you are considering a Tivoli is go and look at one. Get the keys for one and have a good extended test drive if you can. Take one home for 24 to 48 hours and try and live with it in the real world. Do your shopping, take the kids to school, take your dog for a walk and have a good think about it. Get up in the morning, look at it on the driveway with a cup of coffee and think, am I gonna really wanna spend my 23,000 pound on this budget SUV? And if the answer is yes, go and do it. After three years, if you get it on the motability scheme or on a PCP scheme, you could always chop and change it. Don't rush into buying one of these, I think is my takeaway. But I wouldn't not be seen dead in one. Till next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this latest car review. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I've selected a couple more videos from that sort of thing. Uh, here, you might like those. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so to stay up to date with the channel.